Hello, I'm Ken Harris, and uh, we're, we're going to do uh, two narrow little uh, boards today together. They're, they're referred to as panels, so uh, you'll, you'll really enjoy that. And uh, the huge advantage of this is that there's only basically two colours, uh, plus white, of course. We're just using burnt umber and uh, chrome orange. The tools I'm using are a brush about one and a half centimetres wide, a fan brush, and a detail brush and the knife, of course. I'm going to start off with uh, a bit of white and a little bit of orange. And um, I'm going to make this very, very pale. And I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of medium and I'm going to paint over the, the, the two boards entirely. Now some people say, why do the two together? Well, the reason that I am doing the two together is that you get the same colour. You would be amazed at how much variation there is if you, if you um, do them separately. And uh, you do one this week and one next week, you'll find that the colour will be totally different. Um, Obviously, you would try and get them the same, but um, it is very, very hard to, to get them looking the same when you do one one week and one the next. Unfortunately, I've run out of paint. Not a good time to run out of paint when you're halfway through the second board, but that'll be close enough. And the advantage is you can just overlap, run it into the paint that's already on there, and and it's just about a perfect match with the colour I was using. Now, I'm going to take a little bit of orange and run around the edge of this, and down the other side here, get a nice curve in the, in the corners. But on the inside edge of this paint, get the paint nice and thin. Just run it away so that it's nice and thin. You get a, a nice transition into the white and orange that's on there. It's about what we want. And the same on this side, on this board. Run this guy around here. And again, get it nice and thin. This is all covered very well in my workshops and if you would like to come to one of my workshops in the whatever city you're in, um, Perth, Melbourne, Sydney, uh, please look up my website, Ken Harris Art School, and it will have the the dates uh, and locations of where the workshop is. Come along and uh, you'll do three paintings and uh, in the, in the two-day workshop and uh, you'll have a ball. Run that edge away on that inside edge as I've mentioned before, nice and feather it right away on that inside edge. Okay, now we're going to take some burnt umber and this is where a lot of people come unstuck. They put far too much burnt umber on. You only need the tiniest little bit. Run that away. And again, get a nice curve on the corners here. And again, run the paint away very, very thin on that inside edge. Very important. Uh, this is what we call a vignette effect. Um, years ago, some hundreds of years ago, I guess, they used to run vine leaves around the edge of the painting. Consequently, that's where the name comes from, vignette. Um, and 
there was actually more work in doing the vine leaves around the edge than what there was in doing the painting. So we just have this shaded edge now and the vine leaves have been left out uh, because of the load factor, the work factor. However, I have seen old prints, uh, etc., where they have done that, and it, it looks very nice to see the, the, the vine leaves running all around the edge of the painting. It looks very attractive. And they have a few little bunches of grapes, etc., and all that sort of thing. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, wipe the worst of the paint out of the brush. There's no need to wash the brush. And uh, just gently, gently pick up that edge, the inside edge, and stroke it away. All right, now, about halfway up the painting, I'm going to, oh, a little bit less perhaps, um, I'm going to run a very faint line across here and here and I'm going to put some bushes through there. Now we don't want them too dark so take a bit of burnt umber and a little bit of orange and lighten it a bit and um, it could be even lighter than that and We'll run these little bushes across here. Don't worry about it coming down below the, the line itself because any paint that comes below the line will simply pull it away and turn it into reflection on the board. The same on the other side here. Run it away like so. And again, pull away a little bit of reflection. Stroke it sideways to get a sort of a, a shimmery look about it. We need some little trunks running up here. I'm using just the other end of this brush. However, you can get a smaller pointed brush. And I'm going to highlight it with a tiny little bit of orange. Just a little bit here and there. Now, on this board on the right, I'm going to put um, a building and I'm going to pick up, the knife, uh, pick up the paint on the edge of the knife and I'm going to run the roof of the building out like so and return it at an angle like that. And I'm going to uh, fill this area in and get it very, very rough, but just let it run away to nothing on the left-hand side there. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of orange and highlight it with a little bit of orange to give it a, a roughish sort of texture. And it, you don't need to have it squeaky clean down the, uh, the edge of the roof here. That's totally unnecessary. And I'm going to, the body of the building, I'm going to pull that down here, like so. How easy is that? That, that is very, very easy to, to do. And I'm going to uh, put a window in there and a doorway. We'll put the doorway in here. And a window in here somewhere. That's about all we need. We're going to put a little bit of land underneath here. A little protrusion of land here. And just fuse this away to nothing at the back here run that away to nothing and sort of disappearing into that painted edge there. A little bit of land there and we'll come back with uh, some balustrade there. So we need a little bit of 
I'm just loading the edge of the knife to do this and just roll the knife over slowly as you go otherwise the paint won't come off and I, I want this highlighting to be a bit warmer than what this colour is that we've used in the background and I'm just going to highlight the side of that just a tiny bit and then we can run a rail across here and get some little posts in here it's just a matter of loading that knife carefully on its edge and it's very easy to run in perhaps we could come down to the board for a moment and I'll just show everyone how to go about loading that knife I'm making the paint very very flat and thin the paint is only less than the thickness of a paper I'm wiping the knife so that you can see how it's loaded I'm turning the knife over and I'm pulling the paint through the paint uh, I'm pulling the knife I'm sorry through the paint and getting a thin line of paint along the edge of the knife please bear in mind that this paint is on the bottom of the knife it's not on the top there there is a little bit of paint there but there shouldn't be any paint at all on the top when the knife is loaded there's no paint at all except what's dragged through as we as we pull the knife through um, but the majority of the paint is on the bottom and then when you go up to the board keep the knife out from the the board and you get these like how how easy is that there's nothing to it really now the same is being done to highlight that to highlight the roof here I'm just picking up a tiny bit of paint on the edge of the knife and running this highlight in like so now the bottom of the this little bit of land mass we've got a little bit of grass there and I'm going to flick away a tiny little bit of reflection from that house I'm using a fan brush but you can use any brush really and stroke it sideways give it a little bit of a shimmer and I'm going to on the other side I'm going to put a big tree in but just for the time being we'll go to a break for uh, a few seconds and uh, then when we come back we'll we'll go to the the tree and the and the rock formation that's in the other painting I'll see you after the break thank you <laughs> 